CO2 is an absolute game changer for growing aquarium plants. Only problem is a setup can cost you anywhere up to $200. Follow along today. I'll show you how to set up a safe, easy, and cheap CO2 generator at home for around 20 bucks. All right, so what you're gonna want for today's project is this DIY CO2 generator kit. I'll leave a link in the description. A couple of liter-ish size bottles, citric acid powder, baking soda, tablespoon, cup, and then um, you know your CO2 diffuser. And then if you want, you can use an inline timer, basically the solenoid switch and then a bubble counter. So in this first container, we're going to be putting half a cup of citric acid. And then in the second container, half a cup of baking soda. Then one and a quarter cup water in the citric acid container and half a cup water in the baking soda container. Then make sure you shake up each bottle like crazy. Really get in there, shake it up. Now it's time to assemble the unit. It's pretty straightforward. Label A matches up with bottle A and B with B. Everything's already plumbed up for you. Pretty convenient. Make sure you get this on nice and tight. And it's okay if you have a little bit of slack in there. It might actually be nice in the future if you ever decide to uh, switch it out for a larger bottle. And then you're supplied with this little magnet here. You can attach it to that. And that's to ensure that this always stays underwater. Now what we got to do is get the system primed. Basically, we want a little bit of citric acid water to go into this baking soda bottle and for the pressure to build up. There's a little pressure gauge up there. We can see there's nothing going on. And obviously, we'll never have pressure because this valve is open. So the first thing we got to do is shut the valve. And then we can squeeze a little bit of this solution into that bottle. Oh, there we go, just a little bit. And you can hear it fizzing away. You can see it fizzing. That's CO2 being produced. And then it's pushing CO2 into that bottle. You can see those bubbles because of this backflow. And normally what's going to happen is when we open this valve, CO2 will come out of this line here and go into your tank. So let's see if we got any pressure. No pressure yet. Oh, there we go. Pressure, pressure <laughs> building up. And we're going to keep doing that until we see the pressure build up into the green zone there. Pretty much in that green zone at this point. Going to let it simmer for just another minute. You can see CO2 still going in there. All right, and you can see CO2 is still pumping back into this bottle. If you take a look up here, we are almost in that green zone. So... Um, at this point, it's pretty hard to squeeze out CO or the solution from this bottle because there's so much pressure built up. So what you can do is shake this one a little bit, agitate things, and that should get a little more CO2 pumping into this bottle. Now that we have pressure in the system, it's time to finish setting up the rig. I'm going to start with some airline tubing heading out from the valve here into this solenoid. Now the solenoid is really important because I can turn this system off and on by connecting it to one of these outlet timers. As soon as this clicks off at night, stops producing CO2, no more pressure buildup. There should be no concern for an explosion. And so it's pretty straightforward. There's an A line that comes from here and then there's a B line that goes into the tank. You want to have some sort of a check valve in between B and the tank, that way we ensure that there's no water that backflows into the system. And then after the check valve, you're gonna have your diffuser that naturally goes into the tank. One last thing we wanna plumb into the line here is, uh, is this bubble counter. That's what's gonna help us figure out 
how much CO2 is getting pumped into the tank. You want to place the diffuser somewhere where the flow can pick it up and shoot it around the tank. If you don't do that, then the CO2 is just going to go straight to the surface of the tank and it's gonna have very little time to diffuse into your system. So basically the longer a CO2 bubble remains underwater, the more time it has for CO2 to diffuse into the tank. If the CO2 goes straight up to the surface, there's very little time and you're basically producing more CO2 than you need. If you can get away with injecting less into your tank because more of it's diffusing, then you have a more efficient system, you're saving time and resources, that you would spend on recharging the system and buying the materials. So it's best to optimize the CO2 diffusion rate into your tank. So once I get this solenoid in, I can open up the valve here. Basically the way this works is when it's unplugged, there's a wall up here, a valve that's blocking this line. So once I plug it in or this turns on, then it opens up that valve. Like I was talking about earlier, the pressure, this will continue to pump. All right, now that we're about ready to open the system, I'm going to close this valve off uh, and then just open it up a smidge. As I open the system now, you'll see bubbles come into the bubble counter and then out the diffuser. And since I'm barely getting any bubbles, I'm going to open the valve up a little bit more. Here we go. Whoa, that was way too much. I gotta close it back up now. As you can see here, I got the gauge almost completely shut and it's still pumping CO2 into the tanks. So I'm gonna give it a few minutes and it should kind of calibrate itself. There's some pressure built up in the system and once that works off, it should kind of go down to a regular rate. It's not safe for your fish to inject too much CO2 into the tank. So you're gonna wanna get one of these CO2 drop checkers you put it in the tank and then it changes color gradually. You're going to want to shoot for kind of a lime green color. If it starts to get yellow, you know you've got too much CO2 in your tank. And if it's blue, you don't have enough. When you start getting low pressure in your system under the green zone or the liquid in your first container starts to get depleted, then you know it's about time to refill your system. So how much money are we saving by using this system? Well, it probably costs about 40 bucks after all is said and done. If you want to add in those extra things, the CO2 drop checker, the bubble counter, the diffuser, and then 17 bucks for the CO2 generator system. The citric acid and baking soda are dirt cheap. I did the math. If you buy it in bulk, you'll spend about 10 bucks on each, maybe 15, and then it will cost 81 cents a fill that's going to last you anywhere between two to four weeks. Let's just say that it takes you about two weeks to go through one of these, even though that's on the lower end, it's going to cost you 21 bucks to run this system through the whole year. At least where I live, it's going to cost about 25 bucks to fill a five pound cylinder, which should last a year on a 10 gallon tank. So you're definitely saving money going this route. And then something else I'm excited about using these systems for, is the place where I used to go to get my little paintball canisters filled is not doing that anymore. So I have the option of either upgrading to five pound cylinders and then getting new regulators for them, or I can just hop over to this system. I'm definitely leaning towards this because this is super cheap and easy to do. Let me know, do you use CO2? Did you find today's video helpful? If you did, drop a comment, watch some other videos, purchase something through an affiliate link if you want to support my channel. Really appreciate it. Until next time, see ya.